This is going to be your guide for timing and rotations in Pokemon Unite. Now this video might start off a little weird because after the intro I'm going to show a game for my live stream where I'm just explaining how easy it is to win at Pokemon Unite because I'm tired of having bad teammates. However, everything goes right and I think it does a really good job of showing why I'm doing what I'm doing and then after that clip I'm just going to explain it in a bit more detail to really round out the concept of this video. So if it helps you in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share this video with your friends, comment down below, watch as much as possible because it helps out in the YouTube algorithm. And when I say share this video with all your friends, I mean everyone that is interested in Pokemon Unite or even Pokemon, Facebook groups, Discord. Twitter, Reddit, get this information out there because the more people that see this video, the more playable Pokemon Unite will become since this information just gets out there and then less people are just doing stupid things for absolutely no reason. So let's get into it. I feel like not taking the first tower to overcap it will be the strat in competitive. I said that. I threw that out in the last stream where I'm like, you know what's going to be funny? If no one caps for like the the first eight minutes or like just goes for really light scoring because that will be the meta because let's say we all go dreadnought and then they push top and then they get top you just gave us more experience like the 80 points from uh scoring when we get audino we get all that experience back so you actually give up experience by scoring Dwobble's gonna spicy steal? Alright, I just wanted to make sure. So yeah, like it's it scoring is gonna be even less prioritized in uh like organized, competitive, high rank, etc. So now we don't have anything to do for a couple minutes. That's okay. And Zero Aura did his thing where he ganked, he checked, went for the counter gank. Now he's farming, his timings are still good on the camps. And everything's just going to come together. Then he's going to have an opportunity bot. After bot, he's going to have another camp to take. And we, we set. Alright, cool. Oh, ooh, oh, okay, okay. This is fine. Yeah, we don't have any CC. Stun's not up. Oh, stun's still not up. That's fine. That just pushes them off so we can uh, get Vespaquin. If we get all the combi and just set it up like this, it's also pretty good. And now they're bullied out. They don't get a steal. Boom. There. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do in this game. All right, I'm just going to take this. Ooh, ooh. Now, if that was me as Snorlax, I flash double stun there and we get the kill, but simply has great macro, so that's really all that matters. Oh, Crustle's here. Yeah. Ooh, Shell Smash Crustle. All right, noted. Uh, we got this thing up here for the quick take, and then ooh, I don't like this gank force without me. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, all right. There's a lot of shenanigans going on. That's okay. Don't dive. Train gets a little excited and then like dives and then bad things happen. We got the rest of this lane on lock for ourselves, though. Uh, watch the second I threw it. I didn't. I didn't keep the exact time on Vespa Quinn. All right. Ooh. See. Oh, we missed the CC. So that means, like, yeah. If you miss an ability, if you miss CC, the fight is over. And I think some people also don't really like respect that enough. Ooh, I missed a uh, surf one. Ooh. Oh, got it. All right, now we back in. Yep, yep, we're doing our thing. Crustle also shell smash hard rotating down, but that's okay. I've got level seven, so we're actually higher level. Ooh, they were on that a little faster. They did the early roam, and it worked out for them. All right, that'll happen. That's okay. Zero Aura kind of like cheeking around for a steal though, and now we moving up for that steal. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh! This is where we turn it. He's going. Don't let him steal it. I'm, I'm getting his way. I'm getting his way. Nice. Oh, the auto attack secure. Oh, the macro. Oh, slow the, the, the picks. Oh, we went treadmill and then we get to score. Wow. Always for Elisify, Always right. And then we got treadmill. So I have a unite move here. They don't get to play 
my Pokemon Unite today! God damn, literally the difference! And then we can, like, look, we didn't need to, we didn't need to kill them, push up, we just need to run off. Wow! Like, that's it. Again, Crustle proven bad in that last game, because he didn't rotate. Or not the last game, the game before. You bring five people down there, and then you just, like, that extra body means it's very hard to scuff the Dreadnought. Oh, nah, that's just, that's fine. Don't want to, also you don't want to run out into that, because then, like, four people show up. Because, like, their team might just want to go for uh, Rotom, for, just cuz. So yeah, here, here's Machoke. Here's a different laner, just cuz. He went for the Unite move, I got, wow, yeah, okay, wow. Now, if Bot rotated, that helps us out quite a bit, but they had to use all their Unite moves for that one, and giving up Rotom, not the end of the world. Also, as we said, like, scoring opens up Audino and creates a lot of weird things, so I'm just going to take Audino until Dreadnought's up. But yeah, that was, like, their whole team, or at least four of them. Yeah, Luc Lucara went Bot. But yeah, if we had all five there, then we win that team fight, and then we get Rotom. And then we're even more ahead, and we don't give up rubber band experience. Oh, hi. Nice. Good Zero Oral. I'm just going to hold off Rotom through CC, because I can push him back. <laughs> yeah, letting Rotom score... Oh, I'm just dead, huh? Ah! Okay, if that last auto goes off, that's bad, but that's okay. Dreadnought's up. I have my Unite move for Dreadnought. And because we got Dreadnought so early, I have enough time to use it and then get it back up for Zapdos. As long as we secure this, it's going to be very hard to throw that game. Ooh. Triple knock? Alright. He gets me, but we get that. And then Dreadnought is free. Thank you, Cinderace, for being... Like, see, Cinderace is smart. Doesn't overpush. Because you know what happens when they overpush? Oh, Crustle's up. Oh, Zer Ore's up. They immediately drop to that second tier, and then you literally have no chance to score. Because scoring doesn't matter until Zapdos. Except for the opportunities where, like, you... you Like, yeah. Except for the brain-dead opportunities. Which, of course, goes without saying. I'm not saying never score. I'm saying don't focus on scoring. Because that's how you throw. Like, scores are... Scoring is literally just throwing. We've proven that time and time again. Now it's going to be a weird Rotom fight. However, we have a lot of really good uh, sinking issues. Or not sinking issues, but... We have, like, a lot of good uh, sinking set up on, uh, for us right now. Oh, and that's just a uh, Zero Aura. See? Look at this Zero Aura int right here, dude. He uses Unite move and dies. Like, even if he kills us there, it's still a Zero Aura int. Or, like, he's wasting his Unite move, so he doesn't have it for Rotom. He might have it for uh, Zapdos. But if we, like, keep killing him, he'll never get enough AOS energy to do it. And also, not scoring means we have all these points. So we win at Zapdos, and then everyone gets 100 dunks. Damn. Oh, that's a pick. Nice. And that's a pick. Oh, oh, oh! Ooh, alright. He doesn't have his Unite move, so it should be a kind of easy Rotom. Now, since Rotom is closer than Dreadnought, like, you do have to balance fighting and burning it. Like, you don't need Rotom to win. You need Dreadnought to win. Alright, he's he's on me, but he has no cooldowns. I just need to focus on getting CC. Uh, Zero Aura Chain CC'd. I can't Unite move here, even though it would be, like, just an insta-win on team fight. We secured Rotom anyways. Wow, look at what good macro can do. Now, if shit gets stolen from us, that's, that is really bad, and that could still be game. But that's why you do everything. So you just, like, set it up so it's really hard to get into a position where... Yeah, and then, like, that's gone, so... Uh, no reason for me to score. Because I can't score. And now we're set up for Zap... Oh, actually, no, we just walked to Zapdos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Snorlax. Yeah, look at this. We have... We have all this. Yo, Machamp's out of position! Cinderace, please! Don't get... Don't get in that choke! We just need to be here. We just need to be here. We just need to be here attacking. We just needed to be here attacking. We would have already killed it. Like, literally, immediately burn it down already because, look, Machamp's trolling. Machamp's not here, so we lose it. We didn't need... Like, Zero didn't need to be bot right. I know he's my duo. Cinderace didn't need to be center. Like, we, we would have had us. Like, we would have not been worried about Machamp in this situation had every... Had we just bursted it. Because, like, that's the thing. Like, they were dead from Rotom and... Yeah. Game. Done. So, it didn't even need to take that long. It didn't even need to get that weird. Is what I'm trying... Is the point I'm trying to make. So, we could have played that better. 
but still all right. Okay, cool. Kill me. Yeah. You sent. Oh wait. I was about to say you sent two here. Use all your moves. Fortunately, someone went bot, so we split it up, and then everyone scores mid, and now it's impossible to lose. <gasps> wow! I had to like 180 away from my mic to get all that anger out. Oh, we got idiots saying the game's pay to win. And now we defend. I like how Snorlax, like, look at that Snorlax defend. He can just be out there. Wow, the back door from Zero Or. Wow, the Machamp throw. Actually, wait, does Machamp have, ever have the scoring item? No, he didn't. Oh, it looks like he scored that 40 really quick. Like, damn, they can just score that top one. It's still not enough. They can just score anything. And it's not enough. So that's why we're just here to prevent any kind of weird scoring. Oh, Machamp is, uh... Machamp's being sneak. Is Machamp gonna show up here because he saw Snorlax? Yep, he's gonna come in here. Look at you. Look at you! Oh, look at the one shot! Oh, look at this! He's so cute! He's so cute! Goddamn. Game's not hard, man! Oh, man, they could've backdoored... They could've gotten 300 backdoor. They could've wiped us, ran it all the way down, and had three max scores. Still not enough because Zapta. Welcome back. And like I said in the beginning of the video, we're gonna go into this a bit more, but the first thing I want to say is just watching this video isn't going to be enough to get better at Pokemon Unite. Even applying a couple of the ideas for just a few games isn't going to be enough. You always need to focus on improvement. You always need to be considering timings and just getting your rhythm down to where it becomes a second nature as breathing. And even I still need to improve on it. I can always get better. Everyone can always get better because this is the key part of mastery for Pokemon Unite and also just MOBAs in general. So let's talk about these timings and how they play out. So at 9 minutes and 40 seconds, Corphish spawns and we are on it. So I actually lay my Whirlpool early on Cramorant, that way I'm getting the most damage as fast as possible. And then with Snorlax, it's going to be pretty much a guaranteed take, but then like aggression and other people just like focusing on this and getting better at the game might make it a bit of an interesting contest. And it's going to be the same for Audino, that you just kind of mirror it and just make sure you're kind of getting everything before Vespaquin, then you're good to go. Now, also around like 9 minutes and 4 seconds, 9 minutes and 3 seconds, you want to be heading to the Corphish that spawns behind your goal, and then you want to have as much experience as possible for the Vespaquin fight. Now, the Vespaquin fight is where things can get weird. This might actually be like where the first KO happens, where the first major skirmish breaks out, maybe some junglers rotate over to help secure the Vespaquin for the lane. But once again, you just want to focus on taking the Vespaquin, and then it just kind of gets freestyle for a bit. You have to look at the Pokemon that are now respawning, you have to look at the Pokemon Pokemon that are going to be coming up. Also, the center area starts to open up. Maybe your jungle takes it. Maybe just uh, top lane goes and takes the top ones. So sometimes they mirror and just becomes another spawn. But you just kind of want to keep this balanced until around 7 minutes and 30 seconds. So Vespaquin, it spawns at 8.50, and then it takes a 1 minute and 20 second timer. Now you're not going to immediately get it, but that means you have a couple of seconds to try to burst down and rush Vespaquin before you need to back. You really need to start heading back to base as soon as possible so you can be there to help your team when Dreadnought spawns. Also, you don't necessarily always have to recall. You can just walk down through the lane. Maybe your jungler's with you and then you're rotating down that way. Maybe there was like a weird Vespaquin fight on that second spawn and then just some opportunities open up. Sometimes just give up Vespaquin. There were games where I was leaving lane at 7 minutes and 30 seconds to be ahead of everyone else on the Dreadnought. So bot lane, if you're playing bot, you just need to be there. Try not to die foolishly over Vespaquin. Don't give up anything more than you need to. Like, losing Vespaquin experience is nothing compared to losing Vespaquin, dying, and then being the reason why your team loses Dreadnought. That puts you way further behind. So at least play safe if you're you're kind of already losing a lane but don't put yourself even more behind and then for junglers this is also when you need to start considering all right 730 let me go get blue Luke holo let me come over here let me not get caught out of position taking top core fish when dreadnought spawning at seven minutes now here's the biggest reality of the current state of the game if you do not leave top lane for that seven minute dreadnought fight you are the reason 
why the game is lost. That's it. You're trolling, you're griefing, you're not helping the team, you are actively costing the game because that Dreadnought fight is the most important thing. And when you're at that Dreadnought fight, you if you get KOs, you do not score. Scoring does not matter. The only thing that matters in this game is that first Dreadnought spawn and Zapdos, and then everything just kind of snowballs from there. Even if they take Rotom top, they're the ones throwing away the game. Them getting Rotom and first goal is less value than Dreadnought because Dreadnought gives your entire team a massive amount of experience. Also, if you secure it during the Dreadnought fight, you get health back and a shield, which pretty much guarantees your win. So don't worry about scoring until you get Dreadnought, then you have this massive advantage over them, then you kill them at their goal, then you get to score. However, that brings me to my next rule. You have absolutely no reason to be on your opponent's side of the map at any point in the game. You should not be scoring on that second goal because it's too easy to defend, especially after five minutes. So before five minutes, you, there's very short respawn timer, so even if you KO people, they can just keep funneling in and stopping you, and then after 5 minutes, they use the bounce pad, they land on it, and effectively becomes impossible to score. Also, those points aren't doubled because Zapdos hasn't spawned, so you have no reason to be out there. The only thing that's happening if you're pushing into their side of the map is that you are giving up experience. If they KO you while you have the Dreadnought experience lead, they get a massive amount of experience, and it creates a rubber banding effect. That you're gaining this lead, you get this lead, you get this lead, but if they KO you, they get two levels. That rubber band snaps back, and now you just throw your advantage for no reason. 50 points that don't matter, because the biggest thing is you want to get Dreadnought. You go Dreadnought, maybe Rotom, sometimes these spawns get desynced. So if like everyone's fighting for Dreadnought, like all five people go bot, or top doesn't secure Dreadnought, and then there's like some weird desync, you get Dreadnought, you go top. You get Rotom, Dreadnought, Rotom, final Dreadnought spawn, then it's Zapdos. If you have all the Dreadnought, even if you give up all the Rotoms, let's say they get two Rotom, you get three Dreadnought. You have the advantage. You are so far up in levels and experience that it becomes very difficult to lose the Zapdos fight. That's the point of Dreadnought, that you get so much of a massive advantage that they don't even have the slightest chance of even getting in range of a possible steal. And then it also means you get to wipe them out at the Zapdos fight, easy Zapdos secure, and then you get enough points to win. After that, the game does get a little boring. You have to just sit at base for maybe even a minute, depending on how fast you take Zapdos, and you really want to be there on the Zapdos spawn, or even sometime before. Like, you need to be prepping Zapdos, you need to be in the area, in the bushes, setting up a trap, gatekeeping other people from getting in, potentially 2 minutes and 20 seconds, 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock, depending on how those Dreadnought spawns are, are something have gone. Like, you can take Dreadnought, it gives you heals and shields, so you don't even have to back, you just walk up into Zapdos, maybe even 2 minutes, 15 seconds on the clock left, and then all you have to do is bully and gatekeep the opponents out, and then you take Dr Zapdos, there's really no chance for a steal because you're so far ahead, they're so far behind, and then you score. Then you can give up deaths, then you can do whatever, because you respawn as they're coming back through the map, you land on the pads, everything's fine. That's it. That's all there is to winning the game. Focus on Dreadnought, and also when those second and third Dreadnought spawns are coming up, look at the map. If there's a 30 second countdown, plan your route accordingly and make sure you are there for the Dreadnought spawn, or maybe even the fight that's happening before Dreadnought. Don't give your opponent any chance to come back into the game. So Dreadnought and Zapdos are the big things, but also don't overextend. Don't take bad fights. You can walk away from a fight. You can use your advantage in levels and health and mobility and experience and abilities to just get out. Don't give the opponents opportunity to get a massive amount of experience from killing someone that's way over leveled. And again, you have no reason to push into their side of the map because you can always be farming. And if they take Rotom top, let's say they trade Rotom for Dreadnought. Again, that is the worst thing that the opponents can do. The worst thing you can do is go, oh, well, they're going for Dreadnought. This is going to be a time to sneak Rotom. No. Because what happens is, that causes Audino to spawn as you break the goal, and that's just more experience. That's also downtime experience, so while Dreadnought is still respawning, you take all the Aldinos, you go for some jungle clears, you open up the center of the map, and then you just don't overpush, you don't overextend. Like, you can go slightly into their base to secure a kill, but that's it. Don't score. Do not score. There is absolutely no reason to score on the second goal. That's trolling, that's throwing, don't do it. Back off, don't get greedy. That's, that's just the huge thing. Don't get greedy, secure Dreadnought, Zapdos becomes almost guaranteed, and then you win. Hope you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day, thank you very much for watching.